Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Cheaper Apple pencils and a crayon. <laughs> and I've got a giant pile of do, to do, do lists. <laughs> And I have vibranium. You have vibranium? On my iPhone. It's time for iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Lighthouse. With 3D and AI, Lighthouse is the only camera that gets your busy life at home. Get 15% off a Lighthouse camera with promo code TWIT at light.house. And by Active Campaign. If you have a growing business and you want to acquire more customers, well, you need Active Campaign. Their solution goes beyond marketing automation. Get the right type of message to the right person at the right time. For a free trial, go to ActiveCampaign.com slash twit. Ay, 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 OS Today time. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. This is the show where we cover all the latest news about the iPad, the iPhone. We include the Apple Watch and the Apple TV in this pile of iOS goodness. Mm -hmm. Even though Apple has different names for those OSs, they're really iOS. Hello, Megan. Hello, Leo. So I had to get up, gosh darn early, mm -hmm. to go to school today. Yes. Something I haven't done in 50 years because I dropped out when I was 11. No, uh, this is, it was Apple's event, school yeah. event at Lane at the Lane Tech School in Chicago, one of the best uh, public schools in the world because they send more PhD, they, they, they don't graduate PhDs, but more PhDs come from Lane Tech than any other uh, high school in the nation. That's pretty impressive. Yes. Uh, and uh, Apple went there for a special event. Which we stayed home for, mm -hmm. but Renee Ritchie from uh, MacBreak Weekly was there. Andy Anako from MacBreak Weekly was there. Harry McCracken, a lot of people we know, and we were able to cover the uh, show from their live blog because Apple didn't stream it. There will be a video. In fact, by the time you see this, probably there'll be a video up you can watch. But I thought I'd play one of the videos that they played. Not at the beginning. At the beginning, uh, this Tim Cook was on stage. It was a really uh, an event celebrating education, and I liked that. I think uh, they really, uh, you know, a quote from Horace Mann at the beginning saying how important education is. And Apple really is is all behind that. A little disappointed by the actual announcements of the event. We'll get to that in a second. But here's uh, a video they made about one of the new tools called Homework. Settle, settle, please. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. We're not done. Group three. Let's have Ivy and Michael. They all have uh, Apple pencils. Ryan. Sally and iPads and Thomas. Oh, and they look Thomas, so unhappy. Your homework is to explore gravity. Okay, um, don't forget, projects are due on Friday. He dropped a book, Friday, not an iPad. <laughs> yeah, that would be don't foolish. Don't forget your homework. Now they're using the Apple Pencil to do their project oh, homework about gravity. I hate you. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> I wish I could wash you away in the sink. You guys ready? <laughs> if only a hippo would smash you to bits. Okay, so they just threw a watermelon over a bridge. And they got a video it. of it with their... And an egg. You're giving me fit. And then he licked the iPad. <laughs> I'd rather take baths with a man-eating shark or wrestle a lion alone in the dark, eat spinach in the liver, pet ten porcupines, all the kids are dropping. This is, <laughs> they're all dropping things off. Except for their iPads, which don't have cases on them and are making oh, me very nervous. very brave. <laughs> and the garage door opens and Dad comes home while they're using the garage as a studio. Lots of pencil. I don't know, I... I simply can't see why you even exist. Whose poem is this? This sounds like Shel Silverstein, maybe. Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like, like Shel Silverstein. It's not, of course, but it sounds like it. Well, some they use like Maya Angelou and stuff. They, I mean, it might be. They have enough money to buy whoever's poem they want. A 
everything Just Shell's gone. I don't think they have enough money to put Shell on. Bank. Well, with an Next actor up. reading it. Oh, yes. No, no, I, yes, I thought you meant the voice. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, he passed away about 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I love it. It's showing kids using the uh, new iPad. So let's talk a little bit about what Apple announced today. First of all, put your disappointment hats on if you were looking for a new iPhone, a new I Macintosh. It was exactly what everybody kind of predicted, which is they took the current low-end iPad, the $329 iPad, and they updated it so that you could use a pencil with it. That's nice. No smart connector, though, so no, no keyboard, you know, except for Bluetooth keyboards. And they put an A10 Fusion chip in it, so it's not as fast as the current iPad Pros, but it is uh, a lot faster than the old $329 iPad. $299 for education. I'm a little disappointed they did not make a lower-cost education uh, model available. They did drop the price of the pencil, though, by $10 for education. $89. <laughs> and uh, there is a crayon, yeah, apparently. Yeah, from Logitech. Uh, it's $50. We don't know much about that. Is it? Is it? Does it take all the pencil... Capabilities and Logitech has a new eighty-nine dollar uh, case as well. I guess this is be more appealing to younger kids. Uh, I don't. I don't. Well, I would hope with the the crayon branding that it would be something that would be for younger kids, right? And not just because younger kids are right. more likely to lose it. They mostly the announcement uh, though really was about new software, and there was a lot of it. For one thing, Apple is going to take the functionality into iBooks Author, which when we when it came out, whatever it was, eight years ago, five years ago. We were very excited about the potential for making a lot of interesting books and curricula, digital works of all kinds. And, and it didn't seem like it was widely adopted. But I think Apple's done something that will make it more appealing. They're updating the iWork suite, I, Pages, Numbers, um, Keynote. And they're going to add, uh, besides collaboration features to it, they're going to add all of the iBooks author's tools into Pages. So Pages is now the new iBooks author, and that actually makes more sense. Pages is the word processor part of iWork. iWork hasn't really been significantly updated in a long time. There's just been little patches here and there. So this is very good news for all of us because we all get iWork for free on our iPads, uh, and uh, now we'll have a lot of new capabilities. And it's not just limited to educators, but I think educators may well be very interested. In fact, in that homework video you saw... Kids, you know, drawing stuff about gravity and so forth. And my guess is that's in iWork, mm -hmm. that the presentation will end up in Keynote, that maybe they're using pages to do the presentations. And they're using uh, pencils. Uh, but I am I'm a little, uh, you know, oh, and they also announced a fourth new part of iWork, which is for the teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually don't know the all the details on that one. I'm going to see Apple Teacher is what it's called. Apple Teacher. And it, it lets teachers keep track. Uh, you know, we're going to find out more as time goes by, but keep track of the class. Uh, how kids are doing, what assignments, what apps they're using, not just Apple apps, but third-party apps as well. Um, uh, give kids assignments, probably, although we'll have to look and see, let parents know what's going on. Apple was very clear right at, you know, at the beginning to say, and everything that goes on here is private. We don't know what you're doing with it. We can't see into it. Only the teachers and the kids can see into it. And that's, of course, very important to parents. In fact, there was a lot of to-do, hoorah, about Google's Chromebooks, worried people were worried that the privacy uh, of a Chromebook wasn't great. At Google's step forward to change some things and to uh, reiterate others that it is private. That mm -hmm. this, Google doesn't have a view into any of the classroom stuff that you use with Google's uh, tools. But this is really Apple responding to Google, isn't it? Because Google is eating their lunch in the classroom right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Google. This morning, right before the Apple event, announced a new Chrome OS tablet from Acer that is roughly the same price and has Android as well as, uh, and of course, Google Classroom on it. Although, uh, you pointed out, and I didn't realize this, you could use Google Classroom with a class and iPads. Yeah, you can use it on your iPhone. I mean, you can yeah. use it everywhere. I mean, so that's what limited. that's what I use right, I'm using right now on my iPad. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they, they announced that yesterday, the, um, the new, the, the new tablet. Uh, tablet, which was an interesting choice, I think, because one of my... Um, difficulties with using an iPad in the classroom is you need a separate keyboard. And so that's why I like Chromebooks. So a Chromebook 
tablet means you'll have to get a new keyboard. But as you said, that they're trying to get the price down, and right. that's why. Right. Of course, Apple has a class kit in iOS 11.3. We knew about this. This will be additional features that will apparently be make it easier for teachers to keep track of what's going on, to make assignments and so forth. Um, I'm just looking as we go through the notes because the, the event just ended before we went mm -hmm. on the air here. Um, yeah, it was, from what I could see on Twitter, it seemed uh, like there was a lot of flash, a lot of like, look what's amazing. And I don't know that that's what teachers want or need. Apple does sell the sizzle. For instance, they spent a long time talking about all the things you could do with augmented reality in an iPad. You know, you can look at rivers, you can see uh, pyramids, you can dissect travel. Dissect a frog. Dissect a frog without actually cutting into a frog using the Apple Pencil. To me, that kind of sizzle is nice, and I think there are plenty of teachers who understand that one way to grab kids is to have that kind of thing. But I also suspect school districts are looking for utility and value. Uh, they're looking for something that's robust, that won't break right away. Yeah, they're, I guarantee you that iPad in the, we saw in the uh, homework video would be encased in hard rubber. <laughs> all around it if yeah. they really are giving those to kids yeah. and i worry about these pencils because it doesn't look like these are any different than the pencils that we currently use by the way it, apparently no new features either on the apple mm -hmm. pencil uh and these things here's the video that they uh, showed of of the pencil at work these things uh are easy to lose um the the caps especially are easy to lose i i don't know anybody who hasn't lost a cap or two mm -hmm. on the pencil the nibs wear out fairly quickly they're easy to unscrew accidentally and lose. Um, this is the kind of thing you want to give a very responsible child, but not the average eighth grader, if you ask me. Yeah, I think so. the education market is very, very difficult, the educational software market. Um, my husband is a teacher. He's been one for 20 years at least. He used to work in educational software for a short time during the dot-com boom, like for a, a tech company that was trying to tackle this. And he left because it is so hard. All school districts um, have different needs. The students have different difficult. needs. Yeah. The teachers have different needs. Right. And Some different of, interests. Yes. Some don't want technology in the right. classroom at all. And so I think that I've seen my uh, kids, you know, they've gone to the same, they, they went to the same school for many years. And I've seen teachers from when they were in kindergarten, now they're in seventh grade and ninth grade. I've seen teachers that were so like, I'm not even going to email you. I'm going to print everything out and, and give it to you at the end of the day because I'm not comfortable with email. I've seen them now get accustomed to the tools in Google Classroom. It's literally one click and, you know, all of here's what we did this week. Here's the questions you can ask your student about what we've been doing. Here are their grades. Here's what they need to work on. And it's so easy. So, but then there are other teachers that are so familiar with this that, you know, this may or may not work for them. It's tough. I've watched the same thing happen with uh, Moodle, which is a very common, popular, and open source uh, classroom tool, which is now, I think, fairly outdated by Google Classroom and what Apple's offering here. But I've watched teachers who s can use it and make amazing things and really do great stuff. And then I've watched many teachers just completely frustrated with it, feeling like it's too ugly, too difficult to use. And that's a, you're exactly mm -hmm. right. There, there really is a wide range of skills and interests in the education community. I don't think Apple selling the sizzle is necessarily very compelling. They also pointed out that this new A10 Fusion, which is really the old uh, iPad chip that's in the new iPads uh, the, is faster than any Chromebook. I, I don't know if that's compelling to teachers. Maybe it is to some science teacher who's having trouble getting a Chromebook to do what he wants to do because they're sim you know she's simulating rocket launches. I don't know. I don't feel like speed or augmented reality is what most classrooms are looking for. You're right. Some would be. Mm -hmm. but, but I think that I guess what I'm saying is I don't know how compelling what Apple said today is to the general education. Uh, it's exciting. I'm thrilled that Apple's supporting education. I would have liked to see more. I would have, for instance, Apple has a lot of cash. I would love to see Apple. And I think the shareholders would go for this, set up a fund for schools to support, to subsidize um, uh, iPad purchases in schools. Put, put a few hundred million aside. You can afford that. Yeah, I think they do some of that. I know they're working on getting Wi-Fi to schools that don't have um, Wi-Fi. Yeah, they I mean, have, this like, is a non-starter if you don't have ac yeah. internet access. Right. So one of the other things that I think was touted on Twitter by tech journalists was was every iPad, every classroom iPad gets 200 gigabytes of cloud storage per user. That was pretty good. I think well, that's exciting. 
isn't it? But it, Google gives you more. Unlimited. Yeah. If you have Google Classroom, unlimited storage yeah. forever. Although 200 gigabytes is unlimited. Is virtually unlimited, yeah. I should point out. It's a lot. Um, but so. <laughs> but it does feel like, it really does feel like Apple's holding back a little bit. Yeah. That they're not as, je they're a little stingy. Right. Well, I, the, I, I'm, I talked to someone who works at Google Classroom. He's a salesperson, Mark Renee. He said I could say his name. He's not press trained, but he did say that he has worked at Microsoft before and working in education there too. And Microsoft tried to do that um, unlimited and they pulled back. I mean, Google just has a lot more storage yeah. than everyone else does. They can say, you know, unlimited and and they can mean it. The other thing that um, a lot, I didn't hear them talking about or I didn't hear people tweeting about was an ID management system and sort of a, a portfolio. Like what happens to all your work, especially the stuff in the cloud after you graduate? Um, my daughter was in the public school. They were using Google Classroom. She had all of her work there. And then she left to go to private school and she was just looking for a paper that she wrote recently. Like she wrote last year. Last year she wrote a paper about gun control. She was thinking about it. She wanted to go look at it. She had no more access to it. And so that, that stuff. That's too bad. Yeah. So when I. Although <laughs> this is a, a teaching moment. Yeah. Save your. Back your data up. Yes. <laughs> And don't, yeah. So the what when I talked to Mark from Google, he said that uh, Google is supposed to um, have they have a portfolio tool which will um, move your stuff yeah, to your you new Google to, account. and then to your yeah. new Google account. They yeah. have that in place. It's just that her teacher didn't tell her how to do it. But it is a good, yeah, That's it's a good news. teachable. And um, that makes sense, right? That Google would allow you to migrate it once you have to leave behind your your school account. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this this. $329 iPad, this new just sixth generation iPad, only has 32 gigs of storage. It's not expandable storage. Again, you're going to have to buy a keyboard, another 60, 70, 80 bucks. You're going to have to buy a pencil, another $89. It is, this is not particularly affordable. And it's not, and yeah, you have an A10 Fusion processor, but 32 gigs of storage, that's not, I don't know, is that a lot of storage for a kid? Maybe they store everything in iCloud, so it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I would ho actually. You would hope they do because otherwise, um, <laughs> when the, when they break the iPad, which they will inevitably, uh, they won't. They'll lose access to their stuff. So yeah, I guess that's the presumption. Uh, I I'm not sure if I uh, I'm sold on all of this, and it'd be interesting. We'd love to hear from educators what you think, and I think you're right. I think there'll be a range of responses. Some will say this is great. Uh, we've wanted to use iPads in the classroom. There's some things that we needed. This is going to make a difference. I am a big fan of iBook Author. I don't notice not a lot of people used it. Uh, I hope making it available in pages will make a difference. I hope I will. I will start using it. I'm looking forward. They said that uh, the new iWork will be available any you know today. So I'm looking for a download as we do the show, and maybe it'll come in before it's over. We can play with it a little bit. Um, I, let's see what else. Uh, they said that these iPads could be ordered today. Will be available later this week. Usually that means. Mm -hmm on a Friday. Uh, so if you have been waiting and looking for a, a, a low cost iPad, well, this is the new low cost iPad. And for average people on the street, $329. And uh, you might want to get the next one up with a little bit more storage because 32 gigs, unless you get that 200 gig deal is not a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. Uh, on Thursday, I'm going to talk to Carolina Milanese. She was at the event. She's a researcher, an Apple researcher, also a parent um, so on Tech News Weekly, we'll talk she Great. about her experience there. She was yeah an Apple researcher, and she seems to really understand this from a Apple perspective and also from a parent perspective. Later today on MacBreak Weekly, Andy Anaka, who was also at the event, will be joining us. Renee Ritchie uh, will not. I think he's going to be filing. Uh, and Serenity will be. They're busy doing uh, I more, but Andy said he would find a place and get on Skype with us in a couple hours. So that's good news. Mm -hmm. Um, there you go. That's pretty much it. Uh, uh, I, we were at least hoping maybe for an update to the pencil, uh, maybe some other new hardware, an update to the iPad. Um, no, there's still another Apple event, not too far off June, early June for WWDC. If there are new MacBooks, and I think there have to be new MacBooks mm -hmm. this year, Mac, but, I, but I wish I mean MacBooks and MacBook Pros and maybe even MacBook Airs that it'll be, it'll be in June in all likelihood. So what about the Apple Pencil do you want to be updated? Well, there was a lot of speculation that uh, maybe new capabilities. You're right. There's nothing. I don't use it. <laughs> it's sitting on my iPad. I don't use so it So I'm either. the wrong person to ask. But I, I, you know, for one thing, I really would love it if you could turn it upside down and erase. I, is that just me? Uh, some pencils will do that. 
Uh, many pencils uh, for Windows devices, for instance, have buttons. So do the Google pencils, uh, which mean that you have more capabilities as you're drawing. You can press a button and make the eraser come on. Uh, the, the, these are assignable in many cases. This is a Windows uh, pencil, but uh, uh, Google pencils also have buttons on them. The Apple pencil, you know, very typical. Apple doesn't like buttons. So the Apple pencil is is what it is. I think charging could be perhaps done better. But, uh, you know, what about wireless charging for an Apple Pencil? Wouldn't that be a nice feature? That would be. And, and, I, and I, as not, I'm not an artist, so I don't know if the Apple Pencil has features, needs features in terms of the number of, of levels of pressure or anything like that. I think people who use the Apple Pencil are pretty happy with it. I just, I thought maybe there'd be a second generation Apple Pencil, but no. I would like some acknowledgement to how um, kids treat these devices. Like we said, losing it. Like what if there's a way to keep it attached I know there's a magnet oh, on the side of the, yeah. um, the Surface Pen. Um, but Or just, you know, that, that was a great, beautiful video. And in that video that we watched, the kids weren't just using the iPad. They were playing and, you know, throwing things and, you know, swinging. And I think that was on purpose because I think parents and, you know, just people who even aren't parents are generally concerned with how much time kids are spending on devices. And so really it was pointing out that, like, it's it's... It's the sort of parallel to what you're really learning. I'd also like to point out that in all of the Apple videos and all the Apple materials, they talk about all the ways kids can create, except to me, and maybe I'm old-fashioned, the most important way, writing. Mm -hmm. And these are not well-suited to writing. You have to get a keyboard if you're going to do that. Uh, typing on glass is not well-suited to writing. And Apple really acts as if the future is going to be video and drawings and graphics design, and I admit all of that stuff is compelling and exciting, but I think writing is, unless I'm, you know, really old-fashioned, still the main way we communicate with each other. If you're if you're going to get a job in the world, it's not you're not going to communicate with videos. You're going to communicate with writing. So I I just don't think these are as well suited as a Chromebook to the most fundamental thing a kid should be learning, which mm -hmm. is writing. And, and then I know that you're not talking about specifically like hand, you know, pencil to paper writing, but there is something to be said about that. And so maybe that's where the pencil comes in. I mean, there's a part of your brain that's stimulated by writing. I agree with you. And I think writing on glass is exactly the wrong way to do mm -hmm. that. You're the bullet journal queen. You like to write on paper. It's true, I do. And there is, I think, maybe again, I really sound like an old fart here, but I think writing on paper is very different mm -hmm. from writing on glass with a pencil. Yeah. Pencil is fine for drawing. I think it's great for drawing. I think there's lots of things you can do with a pencil and digital software that obviously you can't do with paper but if you're trying to teach cursive uh, that's not the way to do it mm -hmm. you're going to teach cursive because uh, people i don't know maybe the future nobody will be writing anymore we'll all be just sending each other snapchats with emoji and this is great this mm -hmm. is the future this is the way it should be yeah i, I like just you know I like how you called me the bullet journal queen. I'm going to change are my bio. Are you not? No, I just, no, I like I it. you are. I, 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 <laughs> I'm going to just refer to myself as that. Start I, my I own don't want to say channel. Apple's out of touch or Silicon Valley's out of touch. And I, I, maybe we're out of touch. We're not out of touch, Leo. But uh, I just, I feel like I, I was hoping for more. I really was. I'm disappointed, mm -hmm. I guess. And I was prepared for disappointment, by the way. I expected that. As soon as we knew Apple wasn't going to stream it, I thought, oh, that's a sign. That, uh, you know, some people said, well, that's because they probably don't have the capability in Chicago. Of course, they have the capability. We could, they could just hire Alex Lindsay. They could do that. Uh, it sounds like Apple um, knew that this wasn't going to be a major event. This is really was what Apple said it was going to be, a, an event about education. Mm -hmm. And uh, God bless them for supporting education. You know, Microsoft's doing the same thing. I have to feel a little cynical that, uh, you know, Apple has for years supported education. Microsoft has for years supported education, mostly because... I believe these companies think if we can get them young, we'll get them for life. Uh, and and really, they're frantically scrambling at this point because Google's eating their lunch in schools with the Chromebooks. So uh, you could be the cynical one, and that allows me to be the optimist here. And that is that I think a lot of the people working on the ground, working on these tools, really just want understand that kids, they're the future for better, you know, for... I, I know it's a cliche, but it's true. And that there's big problems in the world that need to be solved. And if we're able to give kids the tools to learn how to, you know, throw a watermelon over, you know, figure out gr gravity, then like they're going to use these same tools in the future to solve those big problems that we need solved. And so 
Um, why not give them the best tools? There's a question about, you know, cost and is everybody getting these tools? And is the is the person that maybe is best suited, the kid who's best suited to serve these tools, are they in a neighborhood or someplace where they're not getting access to these tools? Like that, you know, that that, that is an issue. Yeah. I want to show one more Google tool on the iPad that what? might help in education. Do you know Google Lens? Traitor. Google Lens yeah, is available. It's now available for photos. Um, yeah. So it's in Google Photos, which is on iOS. So let's say I'm in this, I need to find out more about this perfume. I just uh, tap on this little Google Lens icon. If you use Android, you're familiar with it. And it's going to do all kinds of magic on this photo. Um, I've only used it on my iPhone. Let's see. So it, it figures out what this is and um, it knows... It knows that, that that's, that's Arizona. No, that it's Proenza Schuler is a New York-based women's wear and accessories brand found in 2002. So Holy and I cow, can, look at um, that. You know, it, it finds the language of it. Um, I thought this was really interesting. I tried it on a lot of my photos. Um, we went to the um, March. Fight in, truth decay. I love it. Is that <laughs> it, your sign? That was my sign. My boys in San Francisco um, at the March for Our Lives. So I'm I glad just, they're about dental health. That's yeah, so <laughs> they yeah. really are. Yeah. Um, and so it says not seeing this. So you can search um, Google and it will tell you demonstration um, that that's what uh, and it finds similar images. So I I uh, tweeted this out because it's so cool i think to google lenses but i can't really think about what you might necessarily use it for um i got some tweets back some people use it to identify flowers you can use it to if you have a bunch of business cards you just put them in there i like that feature i have to say this is early days yet this is the beginning of and and google's using this to train computer recognition capabilities mm -hmm. so that at some point you could have a, a glasses or something watching the world around you and at all times understanding much better what it's seeing and giving you additional information imagine i mean it's one thing to take a picture of something and then later look in google photos and see what that thing is another thing entirely and i think this is where we're going whether it's apple's uh, AirPods in your ear or some form of eyewear on your face what google's doing here and and one of the reasons google is the you know i think the winning horse so far in this race is collecting a lot of information and really refining its recognition capabilities because ultimately that's what you want, right? Mm -hmm. So speaking of uh, recognition, using algorithms... There are things that do that today. Yes. Like my sponsors. lighthouse. Yes. I love this thing. So you could put, uh, you know, and a lot of people are doing this, a camera in your house to keep an eye on things. Or you could put a, on a brain in your house to keep an eye on things. And this is where... Vision is so important. Recognition is so important. The lighthouse is not just a camera. It has a what's something called time of flight LIDAR into it that can automatically create a 3D vision, a view of the world that's sufficient to distinguish, for instance, humans, pets, inanimate objects, moving doors. So lighthouse knows the difference. And it can use face recognition to say, I don't know that person that's in your house and notify you. Your lighthouse is connected uh, to the internet, of course, and can notify you wherever you are on your phone. You can even use artificial intelligence, natural language, to tell it what you want to watch for. Let me know. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like someone new is here with Sarah. Hmm, <laughs> could it be the new boyfriend? Let me know. This is a, a exact query you could enter. When Sarah comes home, if she's with anybody you don't know. Or let me know when the pets are in the house between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Did you see what that kid did, which was really interesting? He waved at the camera. This is another wonderful feature of the lighthouse. You can wave at the camera, and it will ping mom and dad saying, hey, jo Junior's trying to say hello, and there's a speaker and a microphone in the lighthouse, and you can talk to him. Look at this. Did the jo dog jump on the couch today? Uh, who was running between 3 and 5 p.m. This is, this is, if you really want to know, and your kids are telling you, when you say, who broke the lamp, and they tell you nobody, mm -hmm. this is how you find out. This is so cool. 30-day video history, natural language, 3D imaging that can help distinguish between all kinds of things. Oh, here's one more feature that's really important for me. Lisa said, no camera in the house 
unless we can turn it off when we're home. And the lighthouse can be set up, and we have, to automatically turn off when Lisa and I are at home, or anybody else for that matter. So it is com the, our privacy is protected. When we're home, no video. But when we're not home, no mysteries. I love the lighthouse. Lighthouse is awesome. You can find out more at light.house. Use the promo code TWIT. You get 15% off the Lighthouse camera. And as an early customer, 90 days of AI service at no cost. Lighthouse, $2.99 for the camera, $10 a month for the AI service. It is really worth it. I have never... This is, this is exactly where we're headed with, uh, with uh, recognition. That's amazing. I love the Lighthouse. Light.house. Use the promo code TWIT for 15% off. And as I said, as an early customer, you'll get 90 days of AI service at no cost to you. Light.house. Oh, I love it. We actually have two now. I've expanded our lighthouses, lighthouses in the, uh, in the house. Thank them for uh, their support. Make sure you buy. Thank you and farewell. Yeah, the little boy who knocks over the um, Isn't face, that funny? he does not thank you. But. <laughs> that, now, don't do that. Well, you could, I guess, if you wanted to ascribe blame. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I, if you didn't watch the video, mom comes home and, and there's a broken f vase on the ground. And she says to the uh, Lighthouse app, well, was the dog in the house today? And it, no. And then her the sister comes over and says, who was running around in the house between 3 and 5 p.m.? Busted. It was her little brother. This is the little brother torture tool. We got um, a letter. An what? An actual written On letter. Paper? See, yes, I'm saying could... writing. I know. Writing. Yes. Uh, you got the letter from Joe. He's Hi, a big Joe. fan of the network. Um, and we were talking yesterday about horse racing. Oh, yeah. Race tracks. Oh, yeah. He sent us some uh, some pictures. Mm -hmm. He's Here. a He's a... Racetrack photog. Yes, he he sent us an entire video. The Look at track this. at Saratoga. He's up in uh, Saratoga, New York. The um, legendary race track. I would love to go see a race at Saratoga, and he has a video of uh, the track at Saratoga, America's grandest race He's course. David Hyde Pierce narrates it. He says, uh, please take a look at the enclosed video. I'm a professional photographer based here in Albany, New York. Take a look at our site, alariophotography.com. A-L-A-R-I-O. E-L-A-R-I-O. Okay. <laughs> That's why I spelled it for you. E-L-A-R-I-O. Uh, he also says, by the way, Megan's not bad. Megan's not bad. <laughs> Does he mean not good, not bad? Or <laughs> I think he was. this was to you. And he said all these things. Uh, oh, I'm he's saying bad. nice things to me, and you're not bad either. Yeah, I'm not bad either. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not bad as That's well. Nice. So, Thank you, Joe. Um, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. E L A R I O photography.com. Nice. We seem to be ignoring the home pot, but Kevin sent us a tip. Who's not? I <laughs> know. I ignore mine. It's you in do? my kitchen. You yeah. don't listen to it? Every once in a while, I'll say, hey, Shlomo, play a podcast or whatever. Do you know that you can actually subscribe to podcasts by saying oh. the wake word subscribe to iOS Today podcast? Then what happens? That's a really good question. Does that subscribe in your uh, podcast app then? Yeah. And then I guess you oh, can say like just that. play my podcast. See, now podcasts. here we're talking some nice integration mm -hmm. with iOS. See, mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of that. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Good. So like Thank if you're you, listening Kevin. to another podcast and you, we said on iOS Today, you know, you should also listen to the new screensavers. Yeah. And so you could say, oh, yeah, I should do that. And then you would say, subscribe to the new screensavers. And it would be on your phone. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then you could have it. Yeah. And then you can listen to it on your HomePod. Nice. Burke also sent us a little video about how to make an Apple II watch. You know, Burke here, he sent, he emailed. <laughs> Another Burke, pro we're going to have to get Burke projects on uh, on the show. Yes, Burke, yeah. Burke projects. Oh, look at that. It's that got is a tiny, tiny little screen. floppy disk. Little floppy disk. I love it. This is real? Somebody uh, actually made this? Somebody made it. It's an instructable, yeah. Oh my God. I want, oh, look at that knob. Isn't it cute? <sighs> would you, I, I don't think you would wear it, but. Um, you know who'd wear it? Waz. Yeah, probably. Send it to Waz. He would totally wear that. Um, it's it's pretty nice. 
neat. Do you still use your Apple Watch charger that's a uh, Apple? I that's do. A- that's my uh, bedside charger. Mm-hmm. It slots mm-hmm. into a little Mac, little rubber Mac case, and it looks like I've got a tiny Mac on my desktop, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have tiny floppies. Look, he's putting them in with tweezers. <laughs> oh, that is the cutest thing ever. It is. It really is. Thank uh, you for sending that, Burke. Um, Jim writes... What social media app would you recommend besides Facebook? I use Twitter, but in a very limited way, primarily to see journalists' posts. Took a look at Mastodon, but it looks too restricted. So are you still using Vero? No, I stopped using Vero. Just because you didn't need another social media? This is the real problem. Um, I, I think it's not a good idea to replace what you've got with something similar. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you have problems with Facebook, and by the way, you should. We are learning more. Did you see this? The Facebook now said, yeah, we collected information about your phone calls on your Android phone, who you called, how long you talked to them. We collect, yeah, we collect that, but you gave us permission when you installed Facebook Messenger. We asked, is it okay if we look at your contacts and collect all that? They didn't. <laughs> this company is the worst. So I guess, but I, my, you know, my my fear is that how is Vero going to be any better? Mm-hmm. So what I'd love to see is something new and different. There have been, you know, there's Diaspora, which was an attempt to replace Facebook with a federated private platform. Hello, which is hello without the H. Mm-hmm. Hello, that's turned. Both of those have kind of pivoted away from replacing Facebook. I don't know. Really, this is a Wired article about the best alternatives. They're all weak. Okay, so here's my point, and this is why I brought up this article. So um, as long as you've brought up this article, Kevin, we'll talk about it. I think when you say, what do I want to replace Facebook with, you have to think, what... How do I use it? What what about Facebook do I want? And this Wired article suggests many, many different kinds of apps, and you're like, oh, I have to download so many apps. It feels like 2009. But maybe that's not so bad. Maybe it's not so bad to have your information like your specific well, information separate, not given to this giant company. Right. Yeah, we're in a, we're really in a surveillance economy, and I think that we have to recognize that and decide w- w- how we feel about it. I'd like to be with a company. I don't. I can understand surveillance uh, in the sense that that's how they monetize, but I don't want it with, to be with a company that's collecting more information than we realize and not being completely candid about that. And mm-hmm. Facebook is clearly that. So if you need Messenger, well, there are much better choices. Uh, Signal. Just use Signal. Period. Mm -hmm. Just use Signal. Now, the problem with that is everybody has Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Nobody has Signal. So you have to convince your family and friends to use it. But maybe this is the time. Maybe this is the opportunity to get everybody to move to Signal for messaging. Uh, Or Apple's messages, which is fine. It's just limited because you can only do it on 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 Apple devices. But, I, I mean, Apple messages is great. I trust Apple. Although, did you see the recent survey? of which companies people trust to keep their data private. And Apple actually was low. Facebook was the lowest, but Apple was the next lowest, Mm. even behind Google and Microsoft. So Apple, I do trust Apple. I think that their position on privacy is very clear, and I think they really do want to keep things private. Uh, But there are even more private things like Signal. The issue is, yeah, what do you, when you ask me, what do you want to place Facebook with? It's, it's, to me, it's, the thing that is hardest to replace is keeping in touch with family and friends, mm-hmm. discovering high school, old high school flames, finding out whatever happened. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I don't know that it's the healthiest thing to discover. It probably old high isn't. Flames. And people say to me, well, how are you going to te- keep in touch with your family? Well, I've called them or mm-hmm. write them or talk to them. Uh, the people I really want to keep in touch with, I'm already in touch with. I don't mm-hmm. need Facebook for. So Facebook really is mostly, I think, used for people that you kind of sort of a peripheral people. And I don't know what you replace that with. Maybe you don't need to replace that, I guess, is the point. So I think that, um, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, like on Twitter, not people probably watching the show that say like, well, I'm quitting Facebook. I'm just going to Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. I'm sure everyone knows But it this. doesn't seem as bad. No, it right? doesn't. It doesn't seem as bad. To, okay, so... If you think that Facebook isn't still looking at the Instagram po- pictures that you're posting, the things that you're liking on Instagram, of they are. how fast you're scrolling. Lo- by the way, even if you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook is collecting information on you. Mm-hmm. Every page you go by that has a Facebook like button 
or uh, log in with Facebook is collecting your information and Facebook's aggregating that. Believe me, they're not ignoring it. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get out of the Facebook space. Right, and, they're, and they probably have some location tracking. So if you still have Instagram... Any app you have on your phone is collecting... I don't care who it's from. Right. They're all collecting data on you. So all of them. if you don't want to use Facebook because you don't want to see too much political talk or you don't well, that wanna, I understand. then Instagram sure that's a good yeah. solution for that if you just want something more simply maybe like a smaller social network that hasn't already gotten out of control that's fine for Instagram one thing I want to suggest I recently got um, an email from Shutterfly that said here are your memories from 15 years ago and it was when my daughter was born and I just thought oh there's Shutterfly still keeping my photos from 15 years ago before Facebook before Instagram before any of this and I just thought... Um, to some, oh. that's a benefit, though. You just were talking about... No, I know. It is a benefit. Right. I loved seeing that. And they don't know anything else about me besides my photos. You know, Shutterfly has been around forever. They're not... They're, they're selling products. They want to sell me photo books. They want to sell me mugs. They... Um, and, and you know, I back then I did put all my pictures on Shutterfly, and then I sent an email to the people I wanted to share with, and it was like once every month or two months. It wasn't every day when I like took a picture of my latte and felt like the world needed to see it. It was just something different. So if you're using Facebook really to like keep into like make sure that your your kids' grandparents have photos, or you know your aunts or uncles, Shutterfly. Just I mean, it's free service. I think Shutterfly is really good. They're way better than they used to be. They Scott do. Scott Bourne, who is one of our favorite photographers, turned me on to Shutterfly. He said, you know, they're still around and they're still great. Yeah. So I think um, definitely that is. It something. probably is a good idea if you if you fragment your. Yeah, that's what I yeah. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we have to face it that, that just by nature of the internet and using our devices, we're really giving up a lot of information to a lot of different people mm -hmm. who have very little interest in keeping it private. And it's just kind of I think we're kind of stuck with that unless you get offline. Yeah. So Jim was all, so I asked Jim this question. Who asked? You know, and I was like, "What do you use it for?" And he he said, "You know, a lot of things, keeping in touch with friends." And he also said, um, uh, he said. Because he said other groups post urgent messages. He has some groups like local groups. They post lost pets, weather threats, various alerts. Um, you can use Nextdoor for that, which is not owned by Facebook. I'm yeah, not but I bet you Nextdoor is collecting a bunch of information. Probably. Probably you're right. We just I don't have, know about I'll, it. I, have all of, I used to have all of that installed on my phone. And I'm really thinking now, it's really important to understand every app you put on your phone is is really collecting and when we found out that Facebook had, with your permission, been collecting information about every call you made, every call you received, how long those calls lasted, think about this. With your phone, if you, let's say, uh, how can I put this delicately? Let's say you, you hook up with somebody, you're a young person and you hook up with somebody. You meet someone. You meet somebody, you, you go home connection. with them. Did you know, I mean, think about this. Every app on your phone knows... <laughs> that you did that in fact facebook probably knows who you hooked up with because she's on facebook or he's on facebook too and think about the database of information facebook has about every place you go every person you're with facebook knows for instance right now that you and i are in the same place together eventually it knows oh the place they're in together with kevin and patrick oh that's a workplace they now i mean the the amount of information, they know more about you than probably anybody else in your mm -hmm. life. Almost certainly. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just here. I know you work here, but I don't know where you go after you work here. They do. I don't know which hamburger joint you hide out in. They do. I don't know what your favorite candy bar is. They do. They know all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like this whole Facebook thing has really been a revelation mm -hmm. for, a, for a lot of people. We've, we've talked about this so many times. We know this. But I think the regular world is now realizing, oh my God. I don't know if they are realizing. So this is what my advice to Jim. This, uh, Jim says he has a lot of local groups. Jim, what if you decided to say, 
call a meeting in a local meeting place and say, you know, we have this Facebook group that's been going on for so long. Let's, why can't we meet in person? Can we, can we all meet in person? And then maybe Jim, it's your responsibility to say like, I want to talk about privacy and maybe I, I would love to still say in this group with you, but I would like to take it off Facebook and here are the reasons. And I just like as a, as a social service to your local group friends. I think that's a great thing. I think I, I am, I, uh, the delete Facebook movement is great, not because it's going to really make you more private <laughs> in the long run, but because it sends a signal. And I think the more, it's yes. an important signal. And they've lost $100 billion in market value. Yes. And that's an important signal. And I think this is the this is my um, guiding principle in life. Like, just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can, do you something. should do nothing. Right, you can't do um, something. So, you know, I, like I said, we went to the March for Our Lives with my um, kids and their friends. And um, somebody tagged a photo of uh, some of the friends that we were with, tagged me in a photo on Facebook. And I'm still on Facebook. I'm not, I'm, I'm deciding how I'm going to get off Facebook. I'm figuring it out. But I mean, I know how to do it technically. I just need to know, like I said, where I'm going to go next. But I thought, you know, I... I was like, well, that's fine. But you need to know that that is like not only tagging me, they probably know that my kids were there. What about in the future? Like what if, you know, one of them wants to have a political career and it's really bad well, to have like protested in this way. And the good news is we'll have a list of all the booty calls too. <laughs> yes. The good, here's the really good news. Nobody will be, ever be able to be blackmailed again. Right, that's true. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but but the information is is out there. I mean, I could write a program in five seconds that would figure out, you know, every booty call you've ever had because I know what calls you've made. I know when you ended up in the same place as that person later that day. All of that stuff is easily deduced from the information that Facebook has gathered upon uh, uh, on you. Right. And that, uh, I mean, who knows how that will get used against you in the future? Who knows? It's true. But like what you're saying is maybe there will be no shame in the future. Like we'll know all of our dirty, well, dirty secrets. People like Jeff Jarvis, who are very much about being public, say that's one advantage of this, mm -hmm. that there will be no dirty secrets because we all have them and it will all be knowable. The problem I have is it's not fully knowable. It's, you know, in China, for instance, I just read this article today. Uh, they're, they're heavily using face recognition in China. And in Shenzhen, China, they decided they want to punish jaywalkers. So if you jaywalk, they have cameras. They have seven megapixel cameras on all the intersections. If you jaywalk, they, for a while they've been doing this. They've been putting your picture, your information, your name, your the, the, some digits from your national ID up on the screen, a big screen saying jaywalker. Now what they're planning to do is text you, <laughs> send you a text saying you've jaywalked. And here's the here's where you start to get really bad. Okay, that's sh public shaming, but you know if everybody jaywalks, I'm not that shamed. But it's also going to hurt your social credit. And they've announced that if you jaywalk enough, we're going to ding your social credit, which is a score everybody in China has. And if your social credit gets low enough, you won't be able to take a train, ride a bus, get a loan. You you it will be a FICO score for how obedient you are. Mm -hmm. They're doing this very yeah. publicly, and uh, that's where we're headed. Yeah, to Black Mirror. It's Black Mirror. It's straight mm -hmm. out of Black Mirror. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think like our secrets. Like I don't think like the future, like our Stormy Daniels in our lives, are obviously not going to be the problem. The problem is. I going did not have a booty call with that woman. <laughs> I just want to be very clear, and I don't care what Facebook says. Uh. You know. By the way, okay, this is a good example though. Uh, Facebook has much more information about whatever President Trump's relationships have been. They have total information about that. Unless President Trump doesn't have Facebook, which he probably doesn't. But I imagine everybody under 50 does or under 30 does. So when the next president comes along, there's nothing to stop Mark Zuckerberg from saying... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know one interesting thing, uh, this is a little bit of a digression, but you know, we've been having, uh, conversations about Stormy Daniels and the households. Um, so that's gotta be tough. How <laughs> did, what did I, 
Okay, so I'm it glad goes my a little kids bit are like fully this. Grown. Yeah, but uh, it goes a little bit like this where my parents came over for Sunday dinner. They come over every Sunday, and my dad was like, Should we watch the Stormy Daniels interview? And my mom's like, Shh. The most, the highly rated 60 minutes in history. <laughs> yeah. And then Annabella says, She's 14. She says, Who's Stormy Daniels? And Huck says, She's the <gasps> guy, <laughs> she's the guy that, the pres that Trump paid to have sex with her. <clears throat> and then Milo says, She's a porn star. So, like, they are, to, you know, they know. They know. I'm glad Annabella. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So, but my I. My 15 year old doesn't, maybe knows, but doesn't care. Yeah. So Thank I goodness. asked um, Alexa this morning, I asked her uh, the, the my Amazon uh, Echo, I asked her who is Stormy Daniels. And she said she's an adult film star um, by the name of whatever her real name is and something else. And, you know, nothing about Donald Trump or anything. But, um, and then I asked who Monica Lewinsky was just out of curiosity. And it is a blast from the past. She, yeah, and she, another uncomfortable, maybe you had to have uncomfortable conversations with your children then. That was 98. They were eight. They were six and, six and eight. So eight, you got yeah. to avoid probably. Yeah. You guys didn't watch TV. You were that kind of family. No, no, it didn't come up. <laughs> so um, it, it, she's an activist and she was oh, a White House intern. But see, they get this from Wikipedia, yeah, right? I know, but it's still it's still an interesting you know, because you know, Milo was listening and he was like, oh, I bet Trump fired her too. And I was like, well, she wasn't. She was a White House intern. <laughs> they He's listened. getting a little cynical in yeah. his old age. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's 12. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, he was a white, she was a White House intern 20 years ago under uh, President Clinton. But I left it at that. And that's I think- sufficient. I think so. Um, I, I don't know how we got, sorry, I totally sidetracked Boy, us. you uh, you really, uh, yeah. Don't <laughs> um, blame me on this one. Yeah, sorry. Alex asked, I have an iPhone 6 and I would like to get a used iPad 2. A used What iPad basic 2. apps- such as mail, messages, and pages, will will they uh, sync fairly well between my iPhone and the iPad, even though the iPad is running iOS mm. 9? I, I think this is problematic. Um, you really, if you're going to get an iPad, I don't, first of all, I don't know how much you're going to save getting a used iPad 2 right, at this point. Uh, if you want an iPad, I would, I would really shoot for an iPad that can at least run iOS 11. It really becomes problematic. Uh, because you can't run, uh, a lot of modern apps won't run on it. It's going to get harder and harder to do things with this. This is somewhat of an artificial situation created by Apple, but it is the case that uh, the uh, old iPads are getting less and less uh, desirable. The iPad 2 had a longer life span than normal because Apple had a low-cost iPad that they were selling that was effectively an iPad 2, but they stopped selling that a couple of years ago. Uh, and and I, I would say... You might even be able to get the iPad, fifth generation iPad, for uh, a similarly low cost because it's been just been replaced by the iPad. Yeah, right generation. now is a good time to yeah. buy. So I see like on eBay, one hundred twenty nine dollars for um, a iPad two, iPad two, one hundred forty three, ninety four dollars. Oh, so two. yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, I mean, maybe this new egg refurbished iPad two for ninety four dollars. But if you really think, have you heard the phrase "udels"? No. <laughs> this I also learned from my children. Utils. They might have made it up. It's like how much use and love you'll get out of something. Oh. Like really like that include that. No, don't just look at the price. That's a, that's of a low util. Yeah. Like how much dollar. use will you get the ratio out of, of utils yeah. per dollar yeah. is not good. So it might look, oh, ninety four dollars versus, you know, I don't know how much a well, Lou newest. Let's say you get ten utils <laughs> out of an air two, but you get fifty utils out of a new iPad. Now, admittedly, the Air 2 costs half as much, but you're going to get five times the utils. Yeah. <laughs> the newer sense, iPad. Too. Five times the utils, friends. <laughs> Why didn't Tim Cook mention that on I stage I don't know, today? but it's important. It's important with everything that you buy, I whether it be word, like utils. clothes I hope or that's device. a real, we're making that real. Utils. Yeah, utils. I don't know. Um, hope it won't be like milkshake duct, like some sort of did you, did Nazi they, made up utils. Did the kids make up... <laughs> <laughs> Some word. I don't know. Utils. I. Uh, How do you spell it? I don't know. Maybe with a U, since you're talking about use. It sounds like something Gidget would have made up. Utils. She made up toodles. I don't know. He. They, I don't know if anyone else has heard the word. <laughs> How much use and love you'd get out of something? Undergraduate degree level expectations? No. <laughs> not not utils. Noodles. Utils of noodles. <laughs> I like utils. Yeah. I well, love that word. 
Let's just decide I'm using that. It. It's going to be my new word. How much, what is it use and love you get out of it? Yeah. Not how many utils you get out of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, well, use and love. And like, we, yeah. Are we agreed that we're going to spell it with a Y? Oh, I don't know. Or Ask the children. It seems like a U. Ask the children. Okay, I will. I will. <laughs> they might have made it up. I'm guessing it came from a YouTuber, but um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it probably did. And God bless whoever that is. Yeah. Coming up with utils. Um, all right, so we're suggesting to Alex that he buy. So he I wouldn't get that go that far back. I, I I think that at this point, an iPad two is too old. Check your utils. <laughs> uh, Luis says, any suggestions on a thin iPhone case for the iPhone ten? Ooh, you're I, the iPhone case queen. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting around waiting for someone to ask me a question about <laughs> Please cases. Ask me about iPhone cases. Uh, this is the Peel case, super thin. Um, and this is the totally, I mean, they are really the thinnest. I did a, um, a screensaver segment on the 10 best cases for the iPhone 10, and these were the thin ones. Um, the one, I mean, it depends on what you mean by thin. The case I use right now, this is from Nomad, and it's it's pretty pretty thin, but also I think it offers a little more protection. So it, it depends on you want thin and still protection or... Um, also, the iPhone case, just the regular one from iPhone, the silicon case, that's pretty thin as well. But that, I think, is going to cost like $200. Um, let us see. It's $39. Sorry. <laughs> it's way off. Uh, the Totally, which is this one, costs $18, and the Peel costs $25. So. Those are pretty thin. And, I mean, yeah, thin. Yeah, these are very thin. So. I actually, again, I'm going to reiterate that I really like the case. That you gave me. Yeah, it's there. It's very nice of you. There by your computer. This is the Apple Folio, the leather folio case. It's the first case. I I've, I wanted a case that would protect the screen. I really did. And it's the first one wallet case that I could actually put some stuff in, but doesn't really feel bulky. It's because Apple uses a very soft leather or mm -hmm. something. I don't know what it is, but it's a little pricey. It's the only negative. That but looks, yeah, is that the leather or is that, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the leather folio. It is kind of pricey. Yeah. Yeah, it is a shame. It's a ninety nine ducks ducks. But good utils on it. And Eric Duckman in the chat room says the uh, recommends the Otterbox commuter, not as bulky as the Defender. Oh yeah, it's and the Otterbox gives you a nice protection, which is great. And Alex C recommends the Spigen thin case. I use the Spigens on all of my phones. Mm. That's my default case. Email us, Megan at twit.tv or Megan at Megan Maroney. A lot of these questions came from Twitter. You can DM Love those. Me. Love questions. Yes. I'm ready to wear hats. But first, but first let's talk about Active a, Campaign. A, a word from our sponsor. Yes. A new sponsor, by the way, Active Campaign. If you are uh, doing email marketing or marketing of any kind, Active Campaign is the one to look at uh, because they have the features that make your email campaign so much more effective. You want to close more sales, you need active campaign it's so much more than marketing automation you get the right type of message to the right person at the right time stop sending blast emails you know that's that's a waste of, of time and energy and frankly uh, not as welcome as in in the inbox as a as a smart email with uh, with the active campaign smart tools you can dynamically show different content get this dynamically show different content in your message depending on your customers' information, their interactions with you, their social data, their interests. It makes each email targeted to your the interests of your customer. You can send personalized messages, whether they're on your website, browsing their inbox, in and out, about on a mobile device. So really, I shouldn't even say email because it's, it's even more than that. You can do all kinds of messaging. Design eye-catching campaigns. Active Campaign is a really nice drag-and-drop campaign builder. You can also do split testing. This is really valuable to figure out what is going to work for you. It's like A-B testing, but I don't, but I don't want to call it A-B testing because you can have up to five different versions. That's pretty advanced. Find the exact content layout and settings that your subscribers respond to with split testing. Multi-user editing means everybody in the enterprise or anybody you designate in the enterprise can help you create this content. They've got revision history, integrations to a lot of different tools. There's a bunch of them right there, I think, yeah. Conditional content, geo-tracking, site tracking, social sharing, integration with your Google Analytics. It's optimized for mobile. They even give you free image hosting. In fact, they give you a lot with ActiveCampaign. When you go to activecampaign.com slash 
Twit. Identify, nurture, convert, and retain more customers with Active Campaign. For a free 14-day trial, go to activecampaign.com slash twit. As you can see, you're going to get more than that. You also get a free migration from your existing tool. You get two free one-on-ones, even a second month free. Activecampaign.com slash twit. This is the tool you've been looking for. Activecampaign.com slash twit. All right, mate. Time for me to put on my bush hat. Mine too. And your mountain hat. A What's my hat? My Australian, a Mountie hat. Oh, Mountie hat. Or a Smokey the Bear hat. Mm -hmm. You get to pick. I'll be a Mountie. All right. We are wearing hats. Why? Because we have the app Cap Awards of the Week. Mm -hmm. The best apps of the week. Mm -hmm. And you start. I start. Mine is called The Parallax View. Have you heard I this? I love that movie. <laughs> it is a movie and yeah. it is also an app. And it is... Is it the movie in an app? Not really. Oh. It's uh, Peter Norby, a.k.a. Algo Mystic. He used Algo Unity, Mystic. AR Kit, and Ooh. the iPhone X's True Depth camera. Holy cow. What is he doing? To create <gasps> this no. app. So he's using... Oh, yes. you got to show me how this okay, looks. So. This is cool. Here it is. So um, it, it's it's looking at your eyeball. Mm -hmm, so it can see that I'm See what you're moving. looking at. Yeah. And then um, I can... Let's can see, look I think into the, something? Yes. Like, let's look into my... Look into my, the vortex. The void. The void. Okay. I think I, I recorded just in case this didn't work. Let's let's look. Um, can you show that video? It might be our lights. Our lights really defeat a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's show. There, there I took a screen. Oh. You're looking you into your dog's eyes. Turn it, I guess. Oh, wow. You're looking like uh, at buildings. <laughs> yes. Wow. So it's doing, it's kind of an augmented reality thing based on your eyeballs. Yes. Oh, and here's the vibrami, vibranium I promised. Yeah. It's, oh. So it's eye tracking. So I'm I'm moving my head as Does you can see. Does it look see. interesting to you? Because it. I mean, does it look any different, I guess? Yes. You? If I cover my left eye, as you can see, I'm covering my left eye. You can't see that it looks different, but if you... <laughs> it looks exactly the same, <laughs> except you, you look different. Cover, you cover your left eye while no, you're looking at... No, because it's not looking at my eyes. That's oh, true. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do it. You do it. And then uh, it can look inside my iPhone. Um, so there's my uh, one more thing inside my Neat. iPhone, and there's my courage processor. Um, so if you have an iPhone 10... Wait a minute. That's inside your. Uh, it's not real. Your iPhone. Inside my oh, iPhone, but that's neat. Um, and there's the void that he was looking at. So, yeah, I. Um, it's hard with a hat too, but it is. Uh, it's very cool. I mean, it doesn't do anything except for if you're a developer and you want to figure out how to use AR Kit. This is a good. He goes through and shows how he did. So this, it's just really a kind of proof of concept kind of a thing. Yeah, and it's. I mean, you know, you can. See, I, I guess if you just need to relax a little bit and looking into the void of your iPhone might need help. To relax. Totally free. Nice. Nice. It's called the Parallax View. Parallax There's View. Peter, the creator. He kind of looks like Snake Bliskin. <laughs> he does a little bit. <laughs> so check it out. It's super interesting. Um, huh? I understand that reference. Oh, Kevin says he understands the reference. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Um, what, who who was I talking to the other day? Uh, I think it was Jason Snell, and I made a side reference. And he something he just this is the, what the kids do now: reference acknowledged, and then oh. moved on. <laughs> oh, that's what he did. Yeah, Snake Bliskin. Okay. There he is from Escape from New York. And if you want to find out more, but the, as you notice, the patch is on the other side. Oh, you know what that means? No, his other eye got shot out. Mm. All right, let's go look at my pile of dew. D O O. Do you have a pile of dew? Sure, you do. Honey dews, <laughs> things to do, lots of I things call them to do. To dews, and I call them a list, not a pile. <laughs> a pile of dews. <laughs> this is a four dollar ninety nine cent to do uh, app that I kind of like because it's <laughs> it's card based and it's good at nagging you. And I think uh, any to do list, if it's really going to be uh, useful. Should be good at nagging you. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, 23 minutes ago, I was supposed to buy you a snake. I now, I can snake. snooze it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back. That snake's going to come back to haunt me. It's easy to create to-dos, just as with any. 
let's see. Um, prepare Come. for iOS today. Mm -hmm. Good. And I should do that every tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. God, you're such a taskmaster. <laughs> uh, there's a big tomorrow button. That's easy. I can say repeat it, and I should repeat that every week, shouldn't I? Yeah. The options would be, this is the one, nag notifications. Mm -hmm. If I don't do it by then, remind me on the date, end date, never. Three extra notifications, the nag notifications, three extra notifications, 10 minutes apart. You'll see in a minute. I'll get another nag notification. Uh, so there you go. And then you save it. And it's part of your to-do list. Actually, I didn't I didn't do it right, but you get the idea. You can also look at your to-dos in card form, Ooh. which I is like kind of nice. Yeah, I know you like cards. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, you know, it's prettier. You It has a lot of, you know, the fancy stuff you can start sharing this with somebody it creates a public url people can use to view and edit which is kind of i don't know of any to-do list that'll make a public url that people can click on mm. and then they can have something to say about it so for instance you know what i should probably do that with the prepare for ios today oh, yeah. let's share that and then people can people can say i'm going to send this to you they're going mean, to people can say let's just send it to you right now I have something to say about it. I'm going to and, accept and that. And you can accept that. Now you did. And now you have it. Oh, so I have to go to the app store. Well, you have to buy app. this for four ninety nine. I'm sorry <laughs> to say, but that's okay. It will uh, copy this all out to iCloud. So you have, you know, you can have multiple devices. I can put this on my phone as well, which I will. Um, this is, I think, you know, look, there. Everybody, there's a lot of different to-do apps, right? Not everything is perfect for everybody. But if you like kind of big cards, mm -hmm. you like the idea of backing up to iCloud. And I, you have Nags is one big thing. And the other one I really like is the ability to share it in this way so that you could then say, and don't forget your app cap or something like that. And it has Apple Watch app too that looks pretty Oh yeah, interesting. I forgot. I got to put that on my watch. Yeah, so you can, here's what the Apple Watch app looks like. Nice. Right here. Very nice. So yeah coffee with milk and i can have a complication oh yeah that's yeah. i like this yeah five do. dollars look it appears to also include stickers of some kind well hell yeah what good would a do list we without stickers mm -hmm. you get True. a pile of do's with some nice stickers remind me to cut bread on the breadboard Put some sticker on your do that's important cut bread on the breadboard <laughs> i think that's the cooking sticker. oh okay but you're right it could be that could be that. DOO 499, my app cap of the week, because I'm always looking for a better way to remember what I have to do. Mm -hmm. I like that too. If you share it with me, then I can nag you even more than you want to be nagged. Well, and it does support family sharing. So oh, you good. can buy it once and have everybody in your house nag you, which is nice. I'm Get always things looking done. For ways to nag people. Yeah. We've That's it. done it. We do definitely. If you're an educator, we want to hear from a you. Parent or any. I'm really, I, I want to know what you think about Apple's announcements today because mm -hmm. really these are announcements for you more than they are for mm -hmm. us. MeganInfo.tv uh, at Megan Maroney on Twitter um, iOS Today at Twit.tv I also check that email account and send us a video of yourself. Um, we also like to see to hear questions in video. So and tune in Every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, so you can watch it live at twit.tv slash live. Eastern, 1600 uh, UTC. Mm -hmm. uh, twit.tv slash live. IRC.twit.tv if you want to join us in the chat room. And if you want to be in the studio, we'd love to have you. Just email us. Tickets at twit.tv. Tickets are free. And it's great because you can have a twofer. You can watch this and then watch Mac Break Weekly. Now I'm going to do something just for you. Hey, Siri, subscribe to iOS today. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll see you next time on iOS Today, mate.